Welcome to Sens Talk. I'm your host, Brandon Plant. You know, it's been just over a week since the Ottawa Senators have made a major move. The last move was, of course, bringing Josh Norris back into the fold with a massive eight-year contract extension. Um, but it's been just over a week now since Ottawa has made a massive move. And, you know, frankly, the last month or so, that's very, very weird. It's been action-packed uh, in terms of news for your Ottawa Senators. So, you know... We have done a lot of good things in the last couple weeks in Ottawa. Uh, Pierre Dorian has done a great job uh, bringing in some highly, highly talented wingers for Tim Stutzla and Claude Giroux and Alex Dabrinkat, bringing in an all-star goaltender in Cam Talbot. You know, everything is molding into place, but unfortunately there's one key thing missing. Ottawa's top four, and more importantly their entire defensive corps, is disgustingly terrible. Let's be honest about the situation. Last year, Ottawa and their defensive system and the, their defensive lineup was one of the worst in National Hockey League history. It's the reason Ottawa lost a lot of games. It's the reason Ottawa was out of the playoff picture within the first couple months of the season. So let's talk, because Jacob Shikrin, he's available. He's a local kid here from Ottawa, and he's a top four defenseman. And Ottawa desperately needs to bring in a top four defenseman to be legitimate playoff contenders next year. They got the all-star goaltender. They got the star wingers for their second line and their young phenom center. Um, all they're missing is just that extra piece, that crucial piece in their top four to solidify the defensive corps. You got Shabbat, you got Zub, you got Sanderson. Who's going to be there on the right defensive side on the first pairing with Shabbat? So let's talk. Is Jacob Chikrin a viable trade option for your Ottawa Senators? So what are you getting in Jacob Chikrin? Well, you're getting a good offensive two-way defenseman. Last season, 47 games played with Arizona. He had seven goals, 14 assists for 21 total points. Now, you're probably wondering, Brandon, how did he only play 47 games if he's this you know, star defenseman? Well, he dealt with an ankle injury in March, so he kept him out for a good amount of the second half of the season, which is unfortunate to see. But overall in his career, you can really see that his offensive stats continue, and his experience definitely pops out to you as well, especially for such a young kid like Chikrin, who's like 23 years old. Uh, he's played in 337 games with 53 goals, 89 assists for 142 points in those games. And what's really impressive to me about all these uh, statistical numbers for Chikorin is the fact that in his entire NHL career, he's been playing on the Arizona Coyotes. Now the Coyotes, they're not exactly or have never really been, frankly, an offensive juggernaut. So Chikorin putting up these high productive offensive numbers as a defenseman is very impressive. He also led the National Hockey League in goals for defensemen in 2020-2021 with 18 goals, which is fantastic. Uh, Eric Carlson in his prime was getting similar numbers to give you sort of a perspective on how impressive that is for Chikorin. Um, so overall, and I'm also going to get into um, a little bit of an analysis from EliteProspects.com and the type of player Chikorin is. But from what I've seen from the kid, he's a great skater. Very physical too. I loved this kid going into the draft when he was draft eligible a few years back. Uh, he was a first round pick, of course. Um, but he's such a talented skater, big body defenseman, and really moves well. And of course, has great offensive abilities. Now this obviously is an ideal top four option for the Ottawa Senators to add to their defensive corps. More uh, offense from the blue line never hurts for any team, but he's not just an offensive guy. That's the thing I love about Chikorin. Yeah, he's going to contribute offensively, but he's also smart defensively. That's why he's a two-way defenseman. He's going to be in your back end, laying down the body, blocking passes, and using his skating abilities to really clog lanes, and more importantly, block shots too. He's a tough guy. So Jacob Chikorin, you know, he's a complete package. He gets you goals, he gets you assists, he gets you hits, he blocks passes, is he intercepts pucks great skating allows him to really control uh you know the back end of the ice to stop uh, offensive attacks Jacob Chikorin frankly is the complete package and that's why he is so attractive for the Ottawa Senators he's a young kid with a great contract which we'll get to in a bit um so he's just the perfect package for the Ottawa Senators uh here's what elite prospects has to say about the kid as well he's an unyielding two-way defenseman uh, as Jacob Chikorin is a rising star with a two box bursting at the seams he consistently displays elite four-way skating ability and is not afraid to throw his weight around physically as well he plays with poise and composure through high pressure situations and 
hand with the puck on his stick. He can direct the play up ice. He exhibits a particular potent shot that works its magic on the power play and on the forecheck. He has an excellent first pass and uses his vision and awareness to keep the puck moving in the direction of the opposition's tail or to a teammate with more time and space. Defensively, he's adept at tracking the puck and staying a step ahead of the opposition. He's proactive with a stick and body, exerting pressure on the opposition and forcing them to make hurried decisions. All in all, a well-rounded two-way defenseman who competes with pro-level drive and who makes his authoritative presence felt at both ends on the ice. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a future Ottawa Senator to me. Now let's get into the reality of the situation and whether or not he can actually fit within this team's budget. So let's get to that now. Now that you know a bit about Jacob Chikrin, let's talk about whether or not it truly makes sense for the Ottawa Senators to go after the kid. And quite simply, and I'll put it very short for you, it makes too much sense for the Ottawa Senators to go after this kid. It's the perfect fit. His contract and his term fits perfectly within Ottawa's cap hit and their internal budget. And during, you know, the cap era that we currently live in, uh, a top four defenseman that fits within your cap hit is truly one in a million. So that's obviously why he's so expensive to acquire from Arizona. It's not a cheap price right now to acquire Jacob Chikorin. But the contract looks like this. Three years left at $4.6 million per year on those remaining three years. The last two years have a modify no trade clause as well. So we'll have a bit of control after the season. So if Ottawa really wants to make a trade for the guy, it probably should happen within the next year. Um, but to be fair, I, he is a local kid from Ottawa, which we'll get to in a sec. So maybe it wouldn't be too difficult uh, to trade for him after this year when he has that modified no trade clause. Because I would think that he would definitely be okay with coming to Ottawa. But once again, the cap hit there, $4.6 million per year for three years. It's perfect for the Ottawa Sanders. He's a young defenseman at around 23 years old. So the cap hit's great. And more importantly, uh, top four defenseman, especially on the right side, is probably the most coveted thing in the National Hockey League at all times frankly. It's up there with starting goaltending. So because of that, a $4.6 million cap hit at a young a young age, producing at that rate offensively and producing greatly defensively as well, with great skating abilities, I mean, it makes too much sense. With, especially with Ottawa having contracts like Stutzla and Sanderson coming up in the next couple of years, having Jacob Chikrin on a team-friendly deal, providing great, great value in the back end uh, in their top four, makes it a perfect match. He also feels, like I've said many times, a massive need in Ottawa's top four, as he would likely be Thomas Shabbat's partner on the first pairing, with Zub and Sanderson manning the second pairing. Now, he's also a local kid, like I kind of alluded to a couple minutes ago. He spends his summers in Ottawa, and it's also Luke Richardson, former Ottawa Sander, uh, his nephew, which is pretty, pretty cool as well. A little bit of a connection there. We know the Ottawa Sanders love their local connections, and more importantly, their former teammate or player connections uh, how many how many players in the sense organization are sons of former nhl players good amount of them especially when you compare it to the rest of the national hockey league hell their captain is the son of one of the most notorious players in st louis blues history so look uh it just makes too much sense for ottawa to acquire this kid he's a local kid he has an nhl you know background he has a great contract he fills a need it's perfect now there is one slight thing that has a lot of um, let's call them naysayers, uh, kind of split on whether or not we should trade for Jacob Chikorin. It's the fact that he's a left-handed defenseman, but he has played on the right side before for Arizona, so he has that experience, and his skating abilities will annul any uh, inefficiencies uh, with the opposite-handed stick on the right side. It won't be a problem whatsoever. But I do understand why there are some people that are skeptical about getting a right-handed defenseman that's left-handed. I understand that, um, so I definitely wanted to note that as well, but I think his skating really nulls any issue. He's such a fantastic skater and his physical presence too uh you know it's just impossible to get by him frankly so all in all it makes perfect sense for the autumn sanders to acquire jacob chikrin now let's talk about whether or not it's even possible however to acquire him so the verdict is quite simple it makes too much sense for the sanders to acquire jacob chikrin but the unfortunate reality is the package that you're gonna have to give up for the kid is probably more than you had to give up for alex to bring cat and frankly i don't know if ottawa is comfortable doing that we're talking three maybe four pieces in a package including a first round pick another high round pick like a second round pick potentially even another first a prospect and another player maybe like a branch or something the point is it's gonna be a massive massive package for jacob chikrin it's probably the most expensive option right now on the trade uh you know map for the ottawa sanders to acquire a top four defenseman which is why ultimately i think the sanders will elect to acquire another defenseman purely due to the obscene price from arizona and i say obscene not because it's not worth it for jacob chikrin he's a 
hell of a player, star player, one of the better young defensemen in the National Hockey League. But more importantly, Ottawa has given up so many assets already this offseason. If you're talking about two first-round picks and like a Lassie Thompson and another player or another piece, I mean, I, I don't know. That's I don't see I don't see a, a situation where Ottawa really makes that trade. Now, would I make that trade? Look, I feel if Ottawa is going, putting one foot in the pool, trading for Talbot, getting Giroux, trading for Debrinkat, you might as well put your other foot in the pool and go all in and really make a big push here. So yeah, I'd make the splash. I would trade for Jacob Shikarin 100%, but I do understand and I truly can see why Ottawa is reluctant to do so. They're frankly just throwing a lot away in terms of assets, but what you're getting back is a premier all-star young defenseman with great term left on this contract. It's truly one in a million, like I said already in this video. So once again, I don't think Ottawa is going to be able to pull this one off. I truly do hope they can though, uh, because Jacob Chikorin to Ottawa would truly put Ottawa on the map to making the playoffs and potentially even making some noise in the playoffs. So if Ottawa can acquire Jacob Chikorin or another top four defenseman, they're definitely in the playoff conversation. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I really look forward to hearing all your opinions. Should Ottawa trade for Jacob Chikorin? Should they acquire another defenseman like a Mackenzie Weger? Let me know in the comment section down below. Besides that, thank you for watching. Appreciate your support. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly of all, turn the notification bell on so you get notified whenever we upload a new video. Besides that, thank you for watching. Appreciate your support. And go, Sinsko.